Hey YouTube, what's up? I am surrounded by guitars to hit a perfectly good Spinal Tap reference to talk about my favorite camera lens that I have in my collection. Get to the video. What we do is if we need that extra push over the cliff, you know what we do? Uh, put it up to 11. 11, exactly. One louder. Why don't you just make 10 louder and make 10 be the top number and make that a little louder? These go to 11. That's right, this one goes to 11. This is my favorite lens I have in the collection. Anytime I'm out shooting, people wanna know what this is and what I'm doing with it and uh, why I have it. So this is the Sigma 120 to 300, 2.8 all the way through. This lens was introduced in either late 2013 or early 2014 and I bought it. And it was one of the best decisions I ever made. So a little about this lens. Technically, it, the only difference here between a 70 to 200 28 and this lens is this, instead of going from that 70 to 120 range, it starts at 120, but then goes all the way to 300. Um, for what I do, that has been extraordinarily useful because if I'm in a pit situation where I'm on a guardrail and I'm shooting into a competition floor, there are probably five people with me, 10 people with me, and they generally are all shooting with a 70 to 200 or something thereabouts. With this lens, as the reference says, this one goes to 11. I'm able to then push into that 200 to 300 range, still with a handheld setup, and able to deliver some really, really cool results. What I also love about this lens is even if I'm shooting in that 120 to 200 range, I am able to get a lot more compression and a lot more separation in my images. So if I'm shooting athlete one, right, and I'm trying to get separation from the other two people that are around him, maybe they're in different lanes, maybe they're moving around the field, this lens, even if I'm shooting at that 120 to 200 range, I'm going to get more separation there. The background is going to be softer. Oh man, my light just went out. Okay, we had more like technical difficulties. We're just gonna roll with it in the dark. It's more rock and roll anyway. So, like I was saying, you're getting more separation, you're getting more compression, and those out of focus areas look that much better with all the extra glass that you have in this guy. Um, in operation, some of the cool things about this lens is as long as you kind of get a stronger arm and work on locking off your position, you can shoot with this lens completely handheld. Um, I've shot with it with a monopod, I've shot with it with a tripod, um, but I love being able to shoot with this handheld. Shooting with it all day can get pretty rough, but for short stints, you can really hit everything with this guy, even handheld. Um, the OS in there works great. It has all the customizable stuff in there where you can plug into the computer and set it up. I've literally never used it, um, I have plugged it into the calibrator and just to make sure it was working right, but I've never really used anything beyond that. Um, some must-haves is, of course, a nice big old uh, one of these guys. Make sure to keep that lens. Wow, this thing is filthy. Uh, make sure to keep that lens nice and pristine because if you look at this guy, it is without a single spot on it because I've taken amazing care of this lens. Um, problems with this lens. The hood is trash. Uh, I've now had this lens in for service probably three times for some odds and ends that have broken over the years. Um, but this hood has consistently broken. Like at this point, there's not even anything to lock it down if I wanted to. For a while, the locking bits didn't even work. It doesn't click on right. It falls off. It has all sorts of issues there. Um, I assume if they eventually made a newer one, maybe they'd have a better hood on it. But for the most part, we just throw this in the trash. Anyway, it's also really heavy. There's no reason for this hood to be this heavy. Um, so the, the real question most people have with a fancy lens like this is, should I buy it? And the answer is, it depends. Uh, a lens like this is very specific. What's interesting about it is its price is low enough that it's not like an absolute break the bank investment, but you just need to run the numbers. How often are you shooting events that you need a lens like this? And if you're talking at the weekly to monthly basis 
and you're getting real money for those jobs, this is a lens that's gonna pay for itself very quickly and help you stand out from other people that are shooting. If you run the numbers and realize that you, you would barely use this thing once a year, just rent it. It's gonna be much easier and you can probably make your client pay for it too. Um, beyond that, other thoughts on this lens. It rocks. Uh, I've been hopefully being a good editor and throwing up some pictures all over the place during this, but all of my favorite competition images have probably been taken on this lens. There's just a certain magic to it that when you nail a shot, get the focus just right, it looks really, really good. Um, so yeah, check it out, Sigma 120 to 300. Uh, please throw me a like, subscribe, do all that stuff, comment below if you have one of these or been thinking about buying one yourself. Till next time.